Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Kathy Uswak. I'm thrilled to be here this morning to be guest preaching. My husband Jason sitting over there and I live in Boonton. I have just completed the pre-ordination process in the UCC here in the New Jersey Association, so I am job hunting and glad to be here in the meantime. So thank you. When I was in college, I was able to study uh, in the Holy Land for a semester in and around Jerusalem. And we would go to various archaeological sites, cultural, religious sites, and in a lot of those places, I saw millstones. Wherever really people lived, there were millstones, which were stones that ranged from about this big around to gigantic, which were used to grind grain. All I know about millstones is they are heavy. They are pure stone. And whenever I hear this gospel, I remember them. And I think of Jesus' warnings, his very vivid imagery and hyperbole today, which are really served to get our attention. The people in his day and in Mark's day would have known what they were talking about when Jesus warned that it would be better to be thrown in the sea with a millstone around your neck. You can kind of think mafia-like. It's kind of what it's like. And so that always comes to mind. But our gospel passage today actually opens with something that Dave might refer to as a glitter moment letting the glitter out where John comes to Jesus and says, stop this guy. He's doing good things, but he's not following us. And Jesus rightly says, you're missing the point. You're distracted and you're letting ideas of power and division get in the way of doing good works. I think that's something for all of us to think about these days in divisiveness, in our divisive climate. But in actuality, most of our gospel story today actually is a continuation of last week's. You may remember last week's gospel of Jesus telling the little ch child to come in his midst. Today, actually, we can think of our gospel reading as taking place with Jesus still with that child in his lap. And Jesus says some very, very harsh and clear words to get the disciples' attention, but also to get ours, I think. It's better to have a millstone around your neck than to be a stumbling block to others. I like the idea, the imagery of stumbling blocks. I think we can relate to that a little more clearly than millstones. Think about your own life. Have you put stumbling blocks in front of another because you were annoyed with them, maybe jealous or angry at someone? Have you put stumbling blocks in front of yourself? Made it harder for you to be the person God has created you to be? Stumbling blocks are an inevitable part of life because we are human beings. We fall. We cause others to fall. We are not God, and yet, we are always invited to grow closer to Jesus, to follow him. So today I think Jesus is inviting us to first open our eyes and pay attention to those stumbling blocks in front of us. What is getting in our way? How are we getting in the way of others? And what can we do about that? I want to share a few thoughts from Caroline Lewis, who's a professor of preaching at Luther Seminar Seminary. And she says this about stumbling blocks. She writes, what is so appealing about securing the fall of another? This is a question for the human condition. 
one that probes the truth of our human brokenness. It is a question that everyone who claims faith in Jesus needs to answer. When we find ourselves placing stumbling blocks in the path of others, the truth is that we do not want them to succeed, to grow in faith, to be better disciples. We don't want them to advance because their advancement is inevitably about our inability to do so. We don't want them to be farther along than we are. Is this just the nature of sin? The truth of our brokenness that leads to all kinds of ways in which we stop, silence, and subjugate others? It's hard to think about, but I think it's our invitation today. Do we place stumbling blocks in front of others? Does our jealousy, does our inadequacy, does our anger get in the way? But the truth is, too, that perhaps more than placing stumbling blocks in front of others, we often place stumbling blocks in front of ourselves. We can get in our own way more than others. And again, I want to share something that Caroline Lewis wrote. We should start by being honest about the fact that we do this to ourselves, too. We regularly truncate our own potential in life, certain of our lack of abilities. Or we find security in a false sense of humility. We sabotage our own happiness, our own joy, our deserving of attention, our sense of worthiness by way of stumbling blocks that say you are not worthy, you do not, do not deserve it, you need to do more to earn this kind of recognition. In short, you are just not good enough. Is this true in your own lives? There's a burgeoning field of psychology that looks at self-compassion I really think it's tied a lot into spirituality as well. Hearing the word self-compassion, we might think it's fluffy, it's light. And yet, if we cannot be compassionate to ourselves, we cannot be compassionate to another. We all know Jesus' words, love your neighbor as yourself. Think about when a friend is being hard on him or herself. What's your response to them if they screwed up? Contrast that to your, to your response to your own self when you screw up. What words do you say? If you're anything like me, I'm way harsher on myself than I am to any friends. And yet the invitation of self-compassion is to say, no. Every human being is worthy of compassion. And it starts with ourselves. Are there stumbling blocks in the way of self-compassion in your own life? Jesus then goes on to talk about hands and feet and eyes and using some very graphic imagery about chopping them off and plucking them out. But yet, our eyes can lead us astray, as can our hands and feet. I don't know if any of you have heard the saying, we do not see the world as it is, we see the world as we are. And again, that can be a cause for stumbling blocks. How we see the world is shaped by how we grew up, our filters, our prejudices, our experiences. And all too often, that can lead to how we treat ourselves or others. Have you ever been annoyed with someone, and then you hear from them, and you just get a sense that their tone is negative? I know that I've not gotten along with someone, and then I get an email from them, and I think, my, they're being mean. 
Then a few hours later, I go back and read the email, and I realize that's a perfectly legitimate email. I just projected all of my anger and frustration at them. I'm not seeing the world as that it is. I'm seeing the world as I am. I'm putting stumbling blocks in front of my treatment of that person. Jesus is offering us a chance to pay attention, a chance to look with new eyes, a chance to have our hands and feet be of service to him and our world. I think one of the answers lies in the words he calls to us, follow me. Think about when you follow someone. Your eyes are on them. When we follow Jesus, our eyes are trained on him and his call, not on our own self, not on others, on him. When we follow Jesus, our feet are busy walking in his paths, going to those people who we have been called to serve and help. Our hands are busy, not tripping up others, not getting in our own way, but being of service, living out Jesus' mercy and compassion, using our eyes and our hands and our feet to build that reign of God which Jesus invites us into. Instead of stumbling blocks, we follow Jesus, and we will continue to trip and yet, the invitation beckons always to follow him. I think the 16th century Saint Teresa of Avila in the Catholic world said it best. She said, Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. May we use our eyes and our hands and our feet to follow Jesus and to become his body on earth. Amen.